Welcome back, I'm Ryan from Bluewood Gaming, and today I'm giving my thoughts on Iron Sight, which is a free-to-play FPS that is currently in open beta. So, let's just get right into it. Now, before I get into the positives and negatives of this game, uh, I kind of want to go over what the uh, developers of this game were wanting to do uh, with this project. Uh, they saw that Call of Duty doesn't really do much with their PC market. Uh, the games, uh, all the Call of Duty games, essentially uh, almost die out on PC within just a couple of months, and they don't really put much effort into making PC uh, specific features and whatnot that could be in the games. And so uh, the developers of Iron Sight decided, hey, let's make a uh, Call of Duty-esque multiplayer only uh, free-to-play game that actually is specifically for the PC market. And personally, I think that they did really well with this, uh, with only a few issues. So let's get right into the positives and negatives. Now, besides the typical free-to-play FPS stuff, uh, the majority of changes from something like Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, uh, to Iron Sight is things that the developers wanted to fix that the uh, Call of Duty had been doing wrong for a while. Uh, one of the things that they have is you have a little bit more health, it seems, like time to kill is a bit longer, um, but your health doesn't regenerate as quickly, and that is to hopefully eliminate that uh, oppressive SMG meta that Call of Duty's had in pretty much all of its recent releases. Um, you know, there's always that one SMG in a Call of Duty game that is the go-to for all the pros, and they can just run around and get massive kill streaks with it, and it's because that they can regenerate their health so quickly, and so they only need to be out of uh, a firefight for so long, and uh, the guns are fairly accurate because most of these people play on consoles, and so they have to have less, ac uh, less recoil, so you can actually play it with a controller, but... Since Ironsight is designed for PC, this allows them to uh, have more recoil on the weapons, which is actually positive because it makes it more skill-based. The recoil isn't, like, outrageous. It's not like we're playing Counter-Strike or something, but there is a bit more recoil making it more uh, skill-based. Uh, something else that I really like is they incorporate a lot of, like, the player favorite weapons from a lot of the Call of Duties, and even added in more weapons that you don't see in a typical Call of Duty game. Uh, they range anywhere from the typical M4 and AK-47, uh, up to newer things like the AK-12, and guns that you barely see in any other games, like the AR-57, which, if you don't know, it's essentially a submachine gun that looks like an AR, but has a magazine reminiscent of the P90. So... They have a wide variety of guns in here, and there's several different classes of weapons. They have plenty of uh, assault rifles, plenty of submachine guns, four LMGs, and four snipers. So if you're looking specifically for snipers, you're not going to have that much of a uh, selection along with the uh, along with the LMGs. But they understand that most of the people that are playing this are going to be playing uh, the assault rifles and the submachine guns. And the uh, snipers that are there are amazing. Now, I'm not saying they're easy to use or anything, but these are the most satisfying sniper rifles that I've played with in a video game in a long time. It just feels so satisfying to just shoot the thing, uh, let alone get a one-hit kill when you hit somebody uh, above the waist and not the arms. So, yeah, I absolutely love sniping in this. Uh, and you do actually have to be accurate. Uh, it's not exactly like Counter-Strike, where you have to be standing still to be completely accurate. You can still move, and the bullet's still going to go where you're aiming, but uh, it does take an actual bit of skill to be amazing with a sniper. And another thing that I specifically like that Call of Duty actually stopped doing is in this game, shotguns are secondaries. Now, there's currently only two shotguns available in the game, that is the Jackhammer uh, semi-automatic shotgun and the Spaz-12. And the Spaz-12 is definitely the better of the two. 
but uh, I just like that they uh, went back to the Modern Warfare 2 style of having shotguns as secondaries. You also get things such as rocket launchers, uh, a grenade launcher, and definitely pistols as secondaries in this. And along with weapons, killstreaks and perks also make an appearance from similar Call of Duty titles. And most of these perks are some of the more popular ones that have been in Call of Duty games, with the only notable exceptions that I can find being the Steady Aim perk and the Scavenger perk. I'd like to see those added, but I understand that they are kind of potentially too good for how skill-based they're wanting this game to be. But not everything is perfect in this game. This game definitely has some problems. Uh, the first one, and the one that you might notice quickly, is uh, the servers. Uh, occasionally the servers will just not work, such as when uh, Summit1G uh, was playing this game. He actually got the North American servers to uh, almost halt. Uh, nobody else could join onto the servers because he just kind of overloaded them with so many people joining in. Uh, you'll also know occasionally you'll find that there's some uh, latency and some lag. Uh, three times actually I was killed by people several seconds after I had killed them. Uh, so that's a bit of an issue. I hope that they really get that stuff worked out. But overall, um, it's pretty decent, the, the servers, on like a game-to-game -game basis. It's just occasionally you'll see things that aren't all too good with it. Um, on top of that, the other thing, the personal thing that I have with it, um, that is my biggest gripe with this game, is the uh, spawn protection that they currently have in the game. Now, if you haven't played a game with spawn protection before, essentially what it is, is when you spawn, you're given a bit of an invincibility uh, shield until it goes away. Now, in this game, I think that it needs to be limited, because it is a bit too much right now, like... You get it for what feels like a whole five or six seconds, and you can get pretty far away from your spawn. And essentially what that stops is, uh, stops people from being able to come into your spawn and instantly kill you. But with how long you get the shield so far, um, you can get actually into the map and start fighting enemies, and you'll still have it. And so I think that uh, once you start taking a few steps or once you start shooting um that the spawn protection should go away um but yeah that's the biggest problem that i have but why do they have spawn protection in the first place when games like call of duty don't have spawn protection well that's because the maps in this are actually a bit smaller quite a bit smaller than even call of duty maps and so uh, that's something that I hope that they uh, fix in the future is introducing bigger maps. Um, I've seen that this is a reoccurring problem in free-to-play uh, shooters is that they tend to make the map sizes too small, which um, in a game like Warface resulted in just incredible spawn camping and just wrecking a team by doing that. But in this game, uh, it's just with the spawn protection, it just makes it a whole shit show when you get close to somebody's spawn. Um, thankfully though, unlike Warface, the spawns actually flip and move around in this game, but the maps are still way too small uh, for even modes like uh, Team Deathmatch. Which, speaking of modes, there are currently four modes in the game. I don't know if they have any plans of adding more. Uh, there's Secure Point, Team Deathmatch, uh, a special mode that uh, you kill uh, robots in it to collect points. And then the fourth one is search and destroy. So those are the four modes. Hopefully they add more because I'd like to see a bit more variety. Uh, currently I only play the mode where you uh, f destroy the robots. And then I also play Team Deathmatch, because who doesn't play Team Deathmatch? Now, before I finish off this video and give my final thoughts, I need to go over the, uh, the kind of currency in this game and how the system works for unlocking weapons and whatnot. Because free-to-play FPSs, this is typically where they can either screw you over or they can do it pretty decently. This game actually does it pretty decently. So to give a quick rundown of the system, 
Uh, for each match that you play, if you do decently, you get roughly three to four hundred credits. Uh, and then on top of that, you can also do challenges such as uh, get X number of kills uh, with a certain rifle or with uh, a class of rifles or uh, just the other challenges that we saw in games like Modern Warfare 2. Those also give credits. Um, and then you can use those credits. You can either spend 20,000 credits to permanently unlock a gun or you can spend 4,800 to unlock a weapon for one day. Uh, so, it actually doesn't take that long to, uh, to get credits. I've been playing for roughly five days, and I've been able to unlock, um, about five weapons so far. Um, although not all guns are 20,000. It doesn't take 20,000 to unlock a secondary weapon. Those are only 12,000. Uh, different grenade types are... Only 1600, I believe. They might be 1800, but right in that price range. And then um, secondary grenades like concussion grenades and stun grenades, those are also roughly in the 16 to 1800 price range. Um, and so stuff like that is definitely super reasonable. And in fact, it's so reasonable that uh, I wonder how this game is going to make its money because I have not found any incentive. To really purchase anything and I haven't been pushed to purchase anything um, you can unlock weapons faster uh, and by faster I mean immediately if you uh, if you spend some money but uh, to get attachments and stuff on the weapons you have to level them up uh, the same way that you do in some of the more recent Call of Duty games so it doesn't really help you besides unlocking a new weapon and no weapon is locked behind money. You can get a uh, a version of every single weapon uh, by just playing the game. And the only real difference is um, you can get skinned variants uh, with uh, only with uh, real world money. Uh, so if you want a special skin, you might buy that. And then there's other skinned versions that cost forty thousand credits or double whatever the uh, cost would be. Um, but if you don't really care about skins and you're fine using just the bare metal guns, uh, there's definitely no reason to really spend that much money on this game unless you want to unlock everything, which is really unreasonable since you're, there's like 40 plus guns in this game. So there's no reason to unlock every single one and you're definitely not going to use them all because you can level each of them up to, uh, level 25, I believe. It might be 30, uh, but you can level up guns a long time, and I actually don't have a weapon uh, past, like, level 15 so far, and I've been playing for uh, quite a few hours. So, yeah, that's pretty decent of them. So, let's move on to my final thoughts and whether or not I think it's worth it to play this game. And, simple answer... Yes, if you want a Call of Duty, specifically Modern Warfare 2-esque uh, free-to-play multiplayer game, this is definitely the thing to go with. Um, I found it more fun than even, like, the recent Call of Duty games. So, I definitely think that uh, this is really great to get into. The biggest problem with this game, besides the servers and the, uh, besides the servers and that spawn protection, is just... Not very many people have heard of this game, and I hope that more people hear about this game and start playing it. Uh, because it's still in open beta, I wouldn't recommend spending any money on it. But like I said before, the prices uh, are so reasonable that you probably won't want to spend any money on it either. So that's going to be it for this. As always, I'm Ryan from Blue Water Gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one.